Members of the class of 2023, President McCullough, Provost Sasha Kopp, honored guests, friends, and families of the graduates, faculty, and administrators. Good morning and welcome to the commencement exercises of the Gonzaga Law School class of 2023. My name is Jacob Brooksby and it is my honor to serve as Smithmore P. Myers Dean of Gonzaga Law School. It is my pleasure to welcome you to today's ceremony. We begin our program this morning by honoring our homeland ancestors, followed by an invocation and the singing of our national anthem. I ask that you please rise and remain standing through the anthem. In the spirit of the Jesuit practice of composition of place, we acknowledge that Gonzaga University resides on the homelands of the Spokane tribal people. The land our school occupies holds the cultural DNA and the spirit of the first people of the place, the people of the river. It is their ancestors who bring forth the power of the place, the knowledge that comes from the land. We are grateful to be on the land and ask for its support as we work to manifest our intentions during this gathering of hearts, minds, and spirits. And now I invite the law school chaplain, Father Brian Pham of the Society of Jesus, to please come forward to give the invocation. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for our graduates who have gathered here to celebrate completing their education here at Gonzaga Law School. We give you thanks for the families and friends of our graduates, to the faculty and the staff of our Gonzaga Law family, and to all who have supported our graduates these past few years as, the, as they learn how to put passion into, into practice. As our graduates move on to the next stage of their lives, we ask for your blessings to be upon them. In the spirit of St. Aloysius Gonzaga, we pray that our graduates may always be professional, competent, and compassionate. May they be loyal to their promises and responsive to the world's need for social justice. May they be the voice for the voiceless. We pray that you give our graduates the inner strength, compassion, and conviction needed to make difficult and challenging decisions freely and responsibly. May they understand and apply their knowledge creatively and with integrity 
and may they employ their, these skills critically and proactively. May our graduates understand that the option for justice and solidarity with and for others implies not just the rejections of violence, vengeance, and bigotry, but also a rejection of any kind of discriminations or divisions that dehumanizes our human family. As our graduates move on to the next chapter of their lives, may they always be the embodiment of the spirits of gratitude, hope, and joy. And in the spirit of St. Aloysius, in the spirit of St. Ignatius of Loyola, may our graduates become men and women for and with others, thus transforming the world with a passion and faith that does justice. We bring these prayers to you, trusting in the love and mercy that you have given us all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father Pham, and thank you, Big Being Theory, Gonzaga's own a cappella group. Please be seated. To the class of 2023, your experience with us has been an evolution. Our three-year students entered on their journey in the fall of 2020, at a time when we were simply thankful to be gathering in person once again. Your orientation was held right here in the McCarthy Athletic Center, with everyone masked and socially distanced. No one knew for sure if we would be able to continue our plan to educate in person. We were so glad we could. During your time with us, you got to experience the best of the traditional law school experience, one marked by long hours at the library, engagement with student organizations and outside speakers, and close relationships with students and faculty that did not just occur on a screen. Amidst this context, you were knee deep in learning, pursuing likely the most challenging educational program of your lifetime. You learned that black and white law is not always so black and white. You learned that human attributes and differences outside the four corners of the Constitution, the case, the contract, or the case book often go unacknowledged, yet have a major impact on conflict resolution and what gets labeled as justice. You learn that the American experiment in democracy is fragile, but fundamentally rooted in the law, the respect for which is vital to protecting our future. And most importantly, you learn that to hunger and thirst after justice is not just a commitment, but rather a calling for those like you who are entering the legal profession. We live in turbulent times. New technologies like generative artificial intelligence seem to threaten our understanding of what it is professionals like lawyers are going to be paid to do. Are we destined to be replaced by machines? I don't think so. I am confident that each of you has the knowledge, skills, and experience to add value to people in need. As a Gonzaga-trained lawyer, you have the judgment, the perspective, and the empathy to help make this world a more humane and just place for all. Each of you will be leaders of communities. Your opinions will be valued, your services sought. And in the final calculation, your point of distinction will be your ability to impact people with both your head and your heart. And no computer program or algorithm can do that. On behalf of the university and the law school, I congratulate everyone receiving their Juris Doctor degree today. During time, your time with us, you have demonstrated creativity and resilience. You have made lifelong friends, forged through shared hardship and happiness. And some of those friends will go on to be your partners, colleagues, opposing counsel, and judges. We are thankful for each of you. Our expectation is that your professional lives will lend help and hope to those who need them. Each day together on this earth is a gift. I urge you to reflect on the words of poet Henri Frédéric Amiel. Life is short. We have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. In that spirit, let us now recognize all the family and friends with us here today, as well as those of us who cannot be with us in person. And for those who are part of your personal and professional growth, including our faculty and staff. Let's give thanks for their encouragement and sacrifices.
It is now my honor to introduce to you a great friend of the law school, our wonderful leader of the university, our president, Dr. Thane McCullough. Dean Rooksby, Provost Sasha Kopp, distinguished honoree, the Honorable Kathleen O'Connor, today's commencement keynote speakers, the Honorable Salvador Mendoza, Jr., and graduate Casey Olaf Tellison, members of the faculty, staff, and administrators honored family members and special guests, but especially you, the graduates of Gonzaga's School of Law, class of 2023. What a privilege it is to be with you today. Before we commence your well-deserved celebrations, However, let us take a moment to remember and to celebrate those who have been mom for us. In honor of all moms, I would like to ask all the mothers here today to please rise and let us recognize you on this Mother's Day weekend. Today is a day for reflection, giving thanks, and celebrating for all of us. To you, the graduates of the class of 2023, we recognize the remarkable achievements that have led to the granting of your law degree. Think back, if you will, to three or two or four years ago. Some of you entered law school immediately following your undergraduate work but some of you did so having first spent time entering the professional world and gaining hands-on practical experience. The differences from when you began your studies to where you are today are nothing short of remarkable. During that time, just as you always have, you have exemplified what it means to be a Zag taking on the seemingly insurmountable challenges with understanding and grace. On behalf of all of us here at GU, thank you for your willingness and your dedication to finish out your career as Gonzaga students with such fortitude. It was nothing short of extraordinary to witness firsthand how tremendously courageous you all were in the face of circumstances that none of us have ever been witness to before. Today, many of you are joined by family and friends, and other loved ones are watching from afar. They know better than most what sacrifices you have made to get to this point in your life and career, and we are so proud to be able to celebrate with you all today. You may be aware that I am myself a proud alumnus of Gonzaga University, someone who takes immense pride in the educational experiences afforded to me as an undergraduate. The depth and breadth of my undergraduate experience prepared me well for the academic rigors of graduate school. But I must admit to you today that I look back on my graduate school experience at Oxford University as one of the most trying periods of my adult life. Acknowledging the practical reality that I was pursuing my studies in a foreign country, I clearly remember the frustrations which came with having to constantly juggle time for my studies and research with the demands of family, an often unfulfilled desire to maintain friendships, and working 
to make ends meet. While the details may be different for you, I have no doubt that you have experienced similar struggles, frustrations, and moments of experienced failure along the path of your own lives and educational journeys. Of course, this experienced reality not only makes today's accomplishment a sweeter celebration, but it underscores the point that achievement is measured in no small part by the nature of the adversity one has endured along the way. Indeed, if your education at Gonzaga has been truly successful, you now understand at a deep level that learning often emerges from situations and opportunities we might least expect. In fact, I am certain the application of your learning in your professional, personal, and communal lives will be most fruitfully applied in the least predictable occasions, times, and places. You, our graduates, are the ones who will define the future we will all experience and share. And so on this day, you fill us with hope. And that alone is worthy of celebration. It is with sincere appreciation for the sacrifices you and those who love and have supported you have made that I join with my colleagues in congratulating you. As you go forth from this day, I hope you carry these thoughts with you. In your dreams and aspirations, you carry the hopes and dreams of this university. We will miss you, but we look forward to celebrating your many achievements to come with you. Without question, you each will find opportunities for success and achievement in your future work. Take time to nourish your heart and your faith along the way. Wherever you go in this life and whatever good works you choose to pursue, know that God's Holy Spirit is upon you now and will remain with you forever. You have been a gift to us, you inspire us, and we are grateful to have been with you on this part of your journey. It has been my honor to serve as your president for it allows me this day on behalf of the entire Gonzaga community to wish you all the best and Godspeed. Congratulations to you, class of 2023. Thank you, Dr. McCullough. Will Provost Sasha Kopp please come forward? Each year, we confer the Dean's Academic Achievement Award on a student or students who have demonstrated exceptional academic performance and have achieved the highest cumulative grade point average during their studies. This year's recipients of the Academic Achievement Award are Connor Beard and Jonathan Mason Jones. Connor was born and raised in Whatcom County, Washington. After high school, he attended Eastern Washington University and completed his bachelor's degree in biology, graduated with honors, and received the university's Outstanding Graduate in Biology Award. While in law school, Connor worked as a law clerk and then as a Rule 9 legal intern at Armitage and Thompson. The support of his family and friends for their never-ending love and encouragement, especially those who traveled to be here this morning, has meant a lot to him over the years. Johnny is a Spokane native and a Gonzaga Prep graduate. He is the first in his family to earn a law degree and would not be here today without the support of his wife, Tara, and their daughter, Phoebe. Johnny will begin work as a civil litigator with Payne Hamblin this fall. Congratulations, Connor and Jonathan.
The Pro Bono Distinction Program recognizes the volunteer service provided by our students. Members of this year's graduating class reported 11,749 pro bono distinction hours during their years in law school. This year, the Dean's Pro Bono Award of Distinction goes to Jewel Irene Christensen. Jewel is a first-generation law student from Montana. She attended Montana State University where she earned a degree in Latin American Studies and Sociology. After college, she worked for a local law firm and fell in love with criminal defense. That experience and passion led her to extern at the Federal Public Defenders of Eastern Washington in Idaho, where she earned the majority of her pro bono hours. She often worked with individuals with traumatic backgrounds or who were suffering from mental health issues. Her work required a holistic approach to legal representation that went beyond the courtroom. Jewel is immensely grateful for the privilege and opportunity to have been able to give back to the Spokane community while pursuing her dream. Congratulations, Jewel. Will the Honorable Kathleen O'Connor please come forward? The Gonzaga Law Medal is bestowed by the School of Law upon deserving individuals who have distinguished themselves in the service of justice. This year, the Law Medal is awarded to the Honorable Kathleen O'Connor. In 1962, on the occasion of Gonzaga University School of Law 50th anniversary, the university's Board of Trustees authorized the first presentation of the Gonzaga Law Medal for the purpose of calling to the attention of our alumni, students, and the exemplary contributions to the legal profession in keeping with the mission of Gonzaga University. Today, Gonzaga University School of Law is pleased to recognize Judge O'Connor for her exceptional commitment and service to justice. An alumna of the Gonzaga University School of Law Judge O'Connor distinguished herself during her 37-year judicial career. It is worth noting that Title IX was passed shortly before Judge O'Connor entered law school. While few women became lawyers, even fewer went on to hold judicial roles. As a true pioneer, Judge O'Connor was the first full-time fema female Spokane County Court Commissioner, and as the first female Spokane County Superior Court Judge. Judge O'Connor has been recognized for her groundbreaking career, including the Washington Women Lawyers Foundation Award, 2008, the Gonzaga University School of Law Award for Distinguished Judicial Officer, 2009, and the Washington State Bar Association's Outstanding Judge Award, in 2016. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Kathleen O'Connor. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President Thane and Dean Rooksby, for those very, very kind words. And because I am a lawyer, I have a speech. <laughs> but it's short and to the point. And first of all, I want to add my congratulations to all of the students who are graduating today and all the faculty who led them through it, all the parents who supported them. And I wish the best for all of you in your legal careers. 
I'm very honored to receive the Gonzaga Law Medal, and there have been many distinguished uh, awards uh, recipients before me. As President Thane indicated, uh, I graduated here from Gonzaga University Law School in 1975. That's 48 years ago. And, and at that time, I was a member of what we call the full-time night class, the very last of the full-time night classes. And they also had a full-time day class, so the graduation that year was 240 students. And of those 240 students, only 17 were women. And I remember how exciting it was when I finished law school and ready to start my career as a lawyer. And even back then, there were opportunities uh, of all kinds for people who had law degrees, but I was always focused on the courtroom. A classmate of mine, uh, Jean Shaw, and I started the first all-woman's law firm in 1976. At that time, there were very few women practicing in Spokane County. And as President Thane indicated, I was the first woman full-time court commissioner for the Spokane County Superior Court in 1979, and in 1988 was elected as the first woman Superior Court judge. There were two women judges in the district municipal courts um, at the same time, but I was the first on the Superior Court. During my tenure on the bench, uh, I saw many changes in court personnel and how we conduct business. And it was my goal to increase women on the bench uh, at all levels of court. I supported many women either before appointment or election. Today in the three trial courts in Spokane County, that's the Superior Court, the District Court, and the City of Spokane Municipal Court, there are a total of 34 judicial officers, 15 men and 19 women. And it's a good thing for the community to have balance. However, there is still a need to have more racial and ethnic diversity as well, <clears throat> something I continue to support today. <coughs> Excuse me. As the bench reflected the community, our court saw the need for more services and dockets to meet special needs during my tenure. Domestic violence laws were enacted to require dockets for special training for court personnel. Family law dockets and services were expanded significantly. Treatment courts, such as drug court, were created. Spokane County established a children's waiting room for parties who come to court and have to bring their children because they, have no, they lack access to care for a care provider. And we're only one of two in the state that has this children's waiting room. I'm proud that the changes have been made over the years to improve justice in the Spokane County trial courts and that I played a role in encouraging women to join me on the bench, which I continue to do to this day. Thank you to Gonzaga University for the law for this award of the Gonzaga Lamp Medal. It means a great deal to me, uh, and I thank you so much. And I, again, wish you congratulations and have a great and wonderful legal career. Will the Honorable Salvador Mendoza, Jr. please come forward. After earning a JD from the University of California, Los Angeles, Judge Mendoza served as a Washington State Assistant Attorney General, 
a deputy prosecuting attorney in the Franklin County Prosecutor's Office, and as a judge pro temp in various district, municipal, and juvenile courts in Benton and Franklin counties. He was a board member of the Benton Franklin Legal Aid Society and helped establish two county level juvenile drug courts. Judge Mendoza was appointed to the Superior Court of Benton and Franklin counties by Governor Jay Inslee in 2013, after which he was nominated by President Barack Obama to serve as a U.S. District Court judge for the Eastern District of Washington position he held from 2014 to 2022. He was the first Latino on that court. In September of 2022, Judge Mendoza was confirmed to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit following nomination from President Joe Biden. Thankful for the teachers, counselors, and program staff who guided and mentored him as a young man from a migrant family, Judge Mendoza has worked outside the courtroom to make legal careers more accessible to the next generation of students in the hope of continuing to diversify the legal field. Please join me in welcoming to Gonzaga this year's distinguished commencement speaker, the Honorable Salvador Mendoza, Jr. <clears throat> Buenos dias, everyone. That was pretty lame. Let's try this again. Buenos dias, everyone. That's more like it. Uh, you know, thank you, Dean Rooksby, uh, for the invitation, uh, first of all, and for that generous introduction. I also want to thank the Gonzaga Board of Trustees, the professors, and all of um, uh, the friends and family who have supported these amazing people. So please join me in congratulating this outstanding Gonzaga Law School class of 2023. <clears throat> you know, in uh, prepping for this commencement, um, I thought I would, uh, it would be a good idea to uh, share with you a few secrets that I've learned uh, in the practice of law as you embark on your own careers. And so uh, I wanted to start with secret number one. Your dream job is, a, is always within reach. Know that your happiness in your job the thing that actually makes it a dream job will be guided by your ever-changing interests, by your evolving skills, and importantly, by your heart. Here, uh, here's the truth. Your dream job may change, and I know mine has uh, changed as well. I suspect that some of you are beating yourself up a bit. You're comparing negatively to some of your classmates, and you're thinking, well, I've worked my whole life, right? I've invested all this time, all this money, uh, and I'm not starting at my dream job. But trust me uh, when I say this to you, you're not stuck. You know, this is not the end for you. You are not trapped. Be open to opportunities that will undoubtedly present uh, for you. Who knew, for example, that a migrant farm worker, the son of immigrants, would one day be nominated by the President of the United States to serve on the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals job? I didn't. And I know when I was sitting right there, right there, at my own commencement speech, at my own commencement some 26 years ago, I didn't know what this crazy career was going to look like. I couldn't have possibly mapped out the arc of this life or this career. Nor can you, okay? So find joy in the often crazy twists and turns of your career and realize that your dream job is always within reach and it's actually just around the corner. Okay, so here's my secret number two, okay? No one does this alone, okay? You will face seemingly impossible challenges. You've already faced a historic challenge even getting through law school with the pandemic. But remember that you don't have to face that alone. And know 
that you and your support group have the strength to persevere. I know that when I start to waver, I actually I think back at the sacrifices that my family have made. I think uh, back at my mother, who was seven months pregnant at the time, finally arriving home after a long uh, day of work into that small cramped apartment in the San Fernando Valley after working, cleaning hotel rooms, scrubbing toilets, washing bed sheets. And then she hears a knock at the door. And there in the dark, outside her front door, is an ICE agent asking her for her green card and threatening to put her in immigration detention, all while her two-year-old toddler, my brother, was clinging onto her leg. Or I think back at my father. When we were living in Mexico and two men showed up to our house in broad daylight, out to our porch, pointing guns at my father, they kidnapped him, covered his head, held him in the dark for two days. And I remember I was actually standing outside in the almendra tree, watching in horror as they sped away in our family van with my father trapped in the back. So for me, for me to uh, be standing right here, for this moment to be possible, my family and I have had to sacrifice and overcome many challenges that at the time appeared insurmountable, like you. And while our challenges might be different in the moment, they are no less seemingly insurmountable. I think back at my own childhood when I was a migrant farm worker looking up from the asparagus fields as my school bus was actually passing by. I remember trying to finish harvesting that required amount so that I could, you know, make it to school by noon because that was the cutoff. Rushing in as the attendant secretary considered whether uh, to let me in for the rest of the day. Knowing that, again, I had missed the noon deadline. I remember that all I could do was look down at my hands, still stained by the dirt in the fields, hold my breath and hope, hope that she would find it in her heart to let me in. And her name, by the way, is Connie Flores. And although she never had to, she always let me in. So today, when I face uh, challenges, I think back not only at the struggles that my family and I have had, but I also think back at the kindness, the kindness that people like Connie showed. And for them, I endeavor to do better, to be better. For myself, for my family, and of course, for my community. So I know that I could not have done this alone, and I want you to realize I want you to realize this, that you don't have to do it alone either. Okay, so secret number three. Remember why you are here and what motivates you. Take a second to reflect of what each of you have accomplished. Today you're graduating from law school, blessed with a Juris Doctorate degree, about to embark on your amazing careers. Think about that where you're going to accomplish incredible success for yourself and for your clients. But the real question is why? That's the real question, why? Why were you drawn to law school in the first place? Why are you working at that job? Why are you working on that case? And why are you investing time on that issue? That's the real question. Listen, when we started the very first drug court in our community, I wasn't thinking, oh, how wonderful this is going to be for my uh, resume. You know what I was thinking about? I was thinking about all the people that I was seeing every single day coming into court 
addicted to drugs, and they were coming into court and rinse and repeat. That's, that was my why. That was my why. So I hope you realize that as lawyers, you are a resource to your family, but also to your community. Think of yourself as a force of change. You have the power to change the lives of countless people. So when you wonder whether you should be spending the time and the energy on that something, ask yourself this, why, right? Why are you doing it and what? What is it that is motivating you? Each of you came to Gonzaga three years ago with your own whys. So today I want to challenge you to use your own experiences, your skills, your aspirations to go forward and to be great. Let me say that again. To be great. Never forgetting your own whys. So that's it. Those are my secrets, what I wish I would have known when I was actually sitting in that seat. Now, like all great Gonzaga Law School professors, I will leave you with more questions than answers. And ask yourself this, what am I going to do with this po uh, powerful and wonderful opportunity that I now have? Am I honoring my own sacrifices? Am I honoring my family's legacy? Am I holding true to myself and my values? And now I don't have all the answers on this, your commencement date, uh, but neither do you, right? But I take comfort in knowing that as you set out on this journey, your path will be or should be illuminated by the values you hold close in your career and more importantly in your life Hold strong to those principles of justice, of honor, of respect, and of kindness. And thanks to Gonzaga School of Law, when you add these bedrock values to your education, you will receive not only will you blaze a successful path for your clients, but also your community, your family, and yourselves. So once again, I want to congratulate you on this most deserving honor that you each have earned. Felicidades y gracias to your friends, your family, and to you all. Thank you again. Thank you, Judge Mendoza, for those wonderful remarks. Each year, the graduating class selects a student speaker. This year's speaker is Casey Olaf Tellison. <laughs> Casey joined the Marine Corps Infantry direct, directly out of high school and deployed twice to Iraq as an infantry machine gunner with 2nd Battalion, 3rd Marines from 2005 to 2009. After the Marines, Casey attended Eastern Washington University and earned a bachelor's degree in creative writing. Casey's essays have been published in the New York Times, Task and Purpose, The War Horse, and Zero Dark Thirty Literary Journal. His debut memoir, Freaks of a Feather, was published during his 1L year and received the 2003 National Museum of the Marine Corps' Eugene Sledge Award, given for the best Marine memoir written in the past three years. Casey served as the managing editor for Gonzaga Law Review and was a member of the Moot Court Honor Council. He currently lives in Spangle, where he grew up, with his wife and two children. Casey? Thank you, Dean Rooksby and distinguished guests. I want to start by thanking the graduating class of 2023 for the honor of being the commencement speaker. I came to law school as one of the geriatric law students, as I'm about a decade older than all my fellow classmates. And the fact that all of you wonderful young people decided to adopt me really makes an old guy proud. I would also like to thank my family, my wife, Melissa, my son, Waylon, and my daughter, Nora. There were times when law school was all consuming. I would never have been standing here without your support, and I love you very much. 
When the school first notified me that I had the horrifying responsibility of being the commencement speaker, I thought to myself, ah oh, yes, law school strikes again. <laughs> One final stress bomb to end the experience with. But after pacing back and forth like a nervous wreck at the thought of speaking in front of the entire class and the professors that struck an Old Testament fear in me for the past few years, the anxiety was replaced with a feeling of gratitude. I'm grateful that you all trusted me with the weight of this responsibility. So I thought of how best to honor all of you and the experience we all just endured. I've always thought that brevity and concision were virtues, so I sought to encapsulate our experience into a single word. I first turned to one of the large tomes in the library, a frayed, hulking copy of Black's Law Dictionary. I flipped through the onion skin pages, seeking a regal and important sounding word. I even thought about scooping up one of those fancy pants Latin words, which the law seems to be so fond of. I thought if I could take one, I could wield it up here like a Harry Potter spell and just dazzle the crowd. But like most $2 words and Latin phrases, they should probably stay as far away from your writing as humanly possible. All the words I came across, though, they seemed hollow and plastic. Though they made this experience sound transcendent, which it is, they failed to tell the story of the experience. I needed a word that could contain a multitude, a word that could capture the anamorphism of our shared experience. Well, that's when I knew I was in trouble because I was using words like anamorphism. Uh, I knew I was in a rabbit hole that I was gonna have to claw my way out of. With my word search and abject failure, I decided to go home and shut my brain off in front of the TV. As I sat down to aimlessly scroll the movie options for an hour before just going to bed, I came across the word. I saw it in bold red letters above James Caan and Kathy Bates' faces. And that's when I knew I'd found it. The word that encapsulates our law school experience is misery. <laughs> Mr. Webster tells us that misery is a state or feeling of great distress or discomfort of mind or body. Now, for some of you that are hearing that word to describe our experience, they might gasp or clutch your pearls, but that is a response of the uninitiated. One of the most important things I learned as a Marine infantryman in Iraq was that misery is a gift. The pain and the agony, the trials, defeats, all essential to realizing who you are as a person. What law school has given us is a gift of misery, the gift of being pushed to our intellectual limits, more so for our class as we endured law school during the madness of the pandemic. Law school is already a paranoia and stress-drenched atmosphere, so when you sprinkle in a, the sheer uncertainty of a global pandemic, the tension really grew to palpable levels. But this class, they carried on. We wore our little masks and doused ourselves in hand sanitizer as we waited for the impending cold calls in class that would assuredly ruin our reputation in the school for all time. But we kept moving forward, and the strangeness and the stress of it all became white noise as we marched toward our goal of a little piece of paper with our name on it. Before we all started this path, we had an idea of who we were as students, as people. And now, for better or worse, we know this is a gift. But this gift of misery is so much more than that, for you can carry it with you for the rest of your life. When your back is against the wall and you're facing what feels like insurmountable odds, you can think back on this misery you endured and know that you can keep moving forward. This is one of the greatest gifts that a person can receive, the knowledge of knowing you're capable of going just a little farther than the average person. Now, in a parting message to the graduating class of 2023, I want to give you my sincere thank you for our shared experience. I came here with a chip on my shoulder, thinking that as a grizzled old war vet, I had nothing to learn from you. I couldn't have been more wrong. You all taught me that when old folk like myself say that this next generation is afraid of work, they haven't seen a law school library on a Saturday night before finals. In the end, much of my education here came from my classmates, and for that, I am eternally grateful. I want you all to take the weekend to be proud of yourself, pat yourself on the back for a job well done. You definitely earned it. But I also want you to think about one of my favorite sayings, and that's that nobody cares, work harder. The real job starts on Monday. Finally, I would like to thank the Gonzaga School of Law, the faculty, and my classmates for an experience that was truly miserable. I know it will serve me well. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you, Casey. You gave us our new marketing slogan, Gonzaga Law School, come here to experience misery. <laughs> we are almost to that moment you have all been eagerly awaiting, the conferral of degrees. The years have passed, exams are over, the misery is behind you, and the celebrations are about to begin. Our faculty have pushed you to learn and to grow, and I have no doubt that they have prepared you to be excellent lawyers. Please stay in touch with them. Please stay in touch with us. We are elated you're at the finish line, but we are sad to see you go. Now, things are about to get serious. It's time to make this official. On behalf of the faculty, the administration, and the authority vested in Gonzaga University by the state of Washington, I am pleased to present candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor. Associate Dean Kim Pearson will read the names of candidates from A through K, and those graduates will be hooded by President Makolo and Professor Laurent. Associate Dean Agnieszka McPeak will read the names of candidates L through Z, and those candidates will be hooded by Provost Sasha Kopp and Professor Patrick Charles. Brianna Albertson. Brianna Albertson. <laughs> Micah Lutweiler. <laughs> Katie Amsbury. <laughs> Gabrielle Marquez. Jill Bader. Emily Martin Shakya. Emily Bear, summa cum laude. Miles Martin, cum laude. Jessica Carolyn Beatty, magna cum laude. Henry Alexander Matai. Brian Charles Baham. Caleb Matthews. Connor Cameron Beard, summa cum laude. Madeline Matthews. Andrew John Biggins. Ty Maurer. Delena Bullish, cum laude. <laughs> Liam Francis McKeegan, summa cum laude. <laughs> June Bordas. <laughs> Robert Meehan. Madison Nicole Bryant. 
Alan Ayala. Gabriel Donald Bueller, cum laude. <laughs> Eric James Merritt. <laughs> Patty Capone, summa cum laude. <laughs> William Cody Millward. Alicia Chaudhry. <laughs> Allison Milne. <laughs> Jewel Irene Christensen, cum laude. <laughs> Scott Morse, Jr., magna cum laude. Janelle Magdalena Cisneros. Zachary Murnion. <laughs> Megan Conlin. Thomas J. Murphy. Magali Kota. <laughs> Taylor Garn Nelson. <laughs> Taylor Crother, cum laude. <laughs> Sloan Elizabeth Nickel. Joseph Moore Cunningham. Kelsey Lorraine Nelson. I'm sorry, Nolan. Connor William Daggett. Brennan Nolting. Olivia Dias. Yeah! <laughs> Jordan O'Connor. Yeah! Hannah Rose Daniels, magna cum laude. William O'Connor. Nicholas Mark Davis. Noe Palomino. Sophia Davis, cum laude. Cassidy Diane Pappas. Jared De Guzman, magna cum laude. Nikki Petterty, magna cum laude. Paul Deaver, cum laude. Woo! Anne Marie Petrino, magna cum laude. Woo! Amanda McVickers Denny. Ian Plateau.
Cassandra Elizondo. Bruno Ponce. Madeline Erickson. Ryan Resikar. Anthony Estrada. Alec Christopher Ryber, cum laude. Isaac Fortunato, magna cum laude. Bridget Roll. Danny J. Foster. Tristan Randall Salinas. Stuart Adam Fox. Sierra Sandy, cum laude. Cameron Gisaman Napur, cum laude. Patrick Sapinor. Wyatt Joseph Garrell. Skylar Suizo. James Gilreath. Isaac Alexander Center. Joseph Taylor Graham. Andrew Douglas Simister. Elizabeth Marie Granger. Joshua Allen Simmons, cum laude. Samantha Gray. William Brock Splon, cum laude. Anthony Green, magna cum laude. Gregory Thomas Spaghettis, cum laude. Matthew Brian Griffin. Cullen Francis Stack. Caitlin Griffith. Jacqueline Stone. Ian Gregory Griswold, cum laude. Jake Grant Summers. Madeline Gilmet. Lauren Swap. Blake Gustafson.
Hannah Swenson, cum laude. Catherine Elizabeth Handick. Annika Tangbald. Erin Harbaugh. M. Scott Taylor, magna cum laude. Vanessa Nicole Hernandez. Casey Olaf Tellison, magna cum laude. Gloria Ixtali Herrera. Clyde Torres. William Lee Westervelt Hibbard. Tony Trujillo. Rihanna Hicks. Bryce Vanderyot. Devin Hines. <laughs> Stratton Wagner. <laughs> Mary Augusta Hutty. <laughs> Whitney. Christine Wakefield. Under your buttons. No buttons. Under your buttons. No buttons. Mark Wayne Jenkins. Curtis Wamser. Sky Johnson, magna cum laude. Mariah Antilly Welch. Jonathan Mason Jones, summa cum laude. Brianna Wilson, cum laude. Kimberly Jones. Stephen Wright. Anna Mary Jonas, cum laude. Heather Wu, cum laude. Kelsey Kamatomo, summa cum laude. Julia Faith. Zimni. Caroline Kiever, cum laude. Jade Kettner, magna cum laude.
Aaron Winston Kahn. Kyle Kindred. Casey Kinross. Ryan Clee. <laughs> Augustus Creer Ness. Sydney Taylor Kurth. Congratulations, class of 2023. You may now move your tassel to the left. President McCullough, Provost Cop, and honored guests, it is my honor to present to you the graduating class of 2023. Everyone, please stand for the benediction offered by Father Pham. <laughs> At the conclusion of the benediction, please wait for the platform party and the graduates to exit. Then please join us for a reception on the back patio of the law school as we toast our new graduates. Let us pray. As your classes and exams are now complete, may you strive towards excellence in all you do. As the speeches conclude, may your voices rise up to pronounce justice and peace in the world. As the fanfare ceases, may you sing, sing of joy, even in the dark and lonely places. As the applause quiets, may you celebrate the gift May you celebrate and lift up those around you. As you, as you graduate today, may your achievements grow and cause growth in your communities. And may, and may we all know the overwhelming blessings of the one who created all things. And may everything we do, we do for the greater glory of God, amen.
pains me to watch it, but... <laughs> Fantastic. The Zaga just went to the fucking national championship. Go get it. <laughs> 